When it comes to deck boxes for your Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, and other standard size trading cards, few players realize that the box's size is the last thing to prioritize when making your buys. Longevity, ease of use, durability, and design are all factors that can mean the difference between a $10 gem and a $10 disappointment. That's why in this video, I'll be taking a critical examination of Slice deck boxes by Pirate Labs, the Crypt and Vault boxes from Kakapopo, the revised version 2 Dragonhide Vaults from Legion, as well as the finalized versions of the Ultimate Guard Boulder and Archive boxes. And with so many options, some are better than others, sometimes by a lot. Let's take a look. Let's begin with the Crypt and the Vault top-loading deck boxes from Kaka Popo. The Vault and the Crypt are both top-loading, locking deck boxes that house one and two double-sleeved commander decks respectively. Made with the Kaka Popo signature hard plastic and metal fixtures, these boxes come with deck box trays and plastic dividers. While there isn't a separate area for dice and counters, these deck boxes are both sturdy, reasonably well-made, and quite compact. These have been pleasantly redesigned since their first iteration, and while the sections of the box that hinge outwards are still a bit awkward, they no longer bend or snap and fall quite comfortably at the box's side. Opening the box, removing your decks, and closing it again is easy and straightforward. The removable tray has finger grips on all four sides, which I rather like because it means however I wish to grip my card, and from whichever angle or direction I can do so easily. These boxes are interchangeable, not that I see that that matters much. The interior has a soft foam lining to hold the removable trays snugly and to prevent scratching, while the bottom is just the signature stippled plastic. Because of all the hinges and lock on the top, these boxes cannot be stacked upon one another easily. You can lay them sideways on each other, but even then the protruding hinges mean that if you have multiple boxes, or other deck boxes for that matter, there's never going to be a perfect way to line them all up. The boxes also come with a locking top and two duplicate keys for you to use. This is hardly a lock for security. The keys are tiny and flimsy, and I can't imagine anyone locking this regularly. I don't see the point. A thief could just as easily take the box and smash it open later. Overall, these are a solid, sturdy design that is much improved from the previous iteration. I still feel these materials in this overall deck box design can only go so far. Options can hold a single 100 double-sleeved card deck or two in the double. And overall, this is a very solid B, a very good deck box that will appeal to some. Pirate Labs has swashbuckled onto the scene with a full variety of deck boxes with stylized vertical openings. They call these the Slash Series. Available as a mini slice deck box for 80 double-sleeved cards, a larger deluxe slice that holds 120 double-sleeved cards, these are Pirate Labs' version of the common flip box many other companies offer. Thin blue cloth lined interior and faux leather exterior make a nice, minimalist look, but while the appearance is rather average, the construction construction materials seem a cut above the competitors. The boxes themselves are very firm, very solid pieces of material, able to withstand an extreme amount of pressure. Magnets are none too impressive, it takes just a little shake to get this open and everything spills out. Pirate Labs also offers a double card slice deck box that can hold two double sleeved decks for a total of 240 cards, and even has a small removable tray for dice and tokens. There's a few different styles of exteriors, such as this silver version. 
But beyond that and the slash, I'm just not sure what sets this apart. When I say double size, I maybe should more accurately say two and a half size, getting very close to triple, because this deck box takes up a lot of space. Compared to other deck boxes, this is rather large. In fact, look at the Legion V2 Vault, which I'll show next, and which also has its own compartment for dice. Now the Kaka Popo didn't have a compartment for dice, but we can compare it nonetheless, as it does hold a similar amount of cards. So what are you getting for all this extra size? I don't have an answer to that. Not only is the size very unfortunate here, but just like with the smaller boxes, the magnets just don't hold very well. It does not take much, just a little, to get this thing to pop open. Now there's a couple of problems that I have with the dice container inside of this. Three, if I wanted to be nitpicky, and I do, so three. The first is, and I think the most important, the fact that this little die container can't hold the most commonly sized die that we use with Magic the Gathering, which is the spin down. As you can see, it really doesn't fit. I guess you could cram it in there, but then that would make the box uh, too wide to go in the compartment. So I'm not going to cram spin downs in there. As you can see, they don't fit. So that's one problem. The second is the fact that the only way to get this little container in and out is through a thin ribbon, which is attached here, and so you can't, there's no actual hole or grip that will allow you to get a hold of this tray, and so you just have to pull on this ribbon to pull it out. My issue with this is, is that this is the most likely component over time to snap off, to break off, to come off, and so then if that happens, you're not going to be able to get this in and out. The third and final problem that I have with this is the fact that it actually does have this closing top. Uh, I actually feel that this makes it more of a nuisance for getting your dice, the smaller ones, and possibly counters in and out, to have to constantly open and hold open this on the container. And so I really find that this is much more of a problem than it is a convenience. Prices are $9.99, $14.99, and $24.99 respectively. Solid materials and quality construction get watered down with weak magnets and a not so compact design. And no particular features to set this apart from most other boxes of this kind. At best, I can say this is average and thus a C. I think they need a lot more work though. Legion has updated their Dragonhide Vault and Horde deck boxes, and the results are more than just a little impressive. Let's begin with the Horde Plus, and remember, there was a previous version just called the Horde, and what we're reviewing here is the Horde Plus. The tough Dragonhide vinyl exterior holds up to 100 double-sleeved cards. It features an additional slot for tokens, dice, etc., yet still remains fairly compact and with a wraparound opening secured by strong magnets. This is a great example of taking the generic flip design and trying something new. For a little extra space, you get both the compartment for dice counters and extra cards like tokens. But the design has super secure magnets. Now I can get this to pop open eventually, but look, it takes a lot of effort. And all around this box is tough stuff. Now for double the decks, we've got the Legion Vault V2. The original Legion Vault was not to my liking, but this redesigned model really hits all the marks. It's super compact with a solid closure and two parallel compartments, which holds a total of 100 double-sleeved cards each. The middle houses a removable dice tray, but unlike the Pirate Labs, this one holds spin downs and other large sized dice, and can also of course be used for cards such as tokens. Really easy to get in and out, and a nice firm feel. It's not cardboard, it's some kind of rigid cloth or canvas. I like it a lot. The way the deck compartments fold in isn't just for aesthetics. 
This encases your cards on all sides in the extra tough dragon hide, and also adds to the security of those cards as far as shaking goes, as I'll show you in just a moment. I've already demonstrated how this is very compact compared to other double boxes. Yet another plus. And of course, these are available in a variety of colors. If you're looking for something durable, rugged, and able to withstand being tossed around in the back of your car, these Legion deck boxes are right up your alley. The dragon hide style is distinct and not only offers a pleasing fantasy aesthetic, but its thickness and durability adds to the overall protection of your cards. Let me show you what I like best about the Legion version 2 here, and no, it's not this wonderful removable tray. Good material, good size, got the handholds right there to take it in and out, but rather it's the fact that the two compartments, and I have my two commander decks in them right now, that these two compartments actually fold inwards and then the exterior flap wraps around. And so this means that there is significantly less pressure when this gets bounced and jostled around, pushing down on this magnetic lid, which means that it's really gonna hold tight, or at least I think it will. I have not yet done this, but I feel I have enough of an understanding. See, look, this is folded in. There's no cards. This isn't even, it's, it is, I suppose, pushing to some degree. The physicists among you will have to clarify on that, but I suspect that this is engineered to really ensure that it is not going to come undone when we do a shake. And I'm gonna do every possible angle because this is a very interesting design. So here's this. This is the one, by the way. Look, coming down, all right. Oh gosh. Not touching the flap, come on. Oh, this is great. Now, I'm confident now, I'm confident. This way, just in case, and there's no way this way, that'd be the bottom coming out, but just for the heck of it. Woo! Ah, screw it. It's not coming undone. People have been asking, they say, I wanna see it drop from a distance. Uh, okay. Oh, the flap came open, but my cards are perfect. Really love this redesign. Not that much more costly at an average of $17 and $30 respectively, but these versions are a solid enthusiastic A. Excellent work, Legion, excellent. Make sure when purchasing that you are getting the new V2 Volt and Horde Plus. Again, you want the V2 and Plus versions of these as their first iterations were significantly worse in my evaluation. I suppose the theme of this video is new versions of previous products, and thus I am pleased to present the finalized boulders from Ultimate Guard. Whereas the prototypes I previously evaluated had some flaking issues, the finalized line of boulders present vibrant frosted colors that withstand heavy use and make a memorable impression. As with other Ultimate Guard solid boxes, the cover tilts forward for easy access, providing a symmetrical shape that allows the second half to double as a card holder during game play or a place for your sideboard. I also noticed the closure clicks shut a lot better and tighter on these, another superior aspect to the prototypes I reviewed. And I feel adjustments like this make a major difference. As mentioned in the previous video, the boulders come in two sizes, holding 80 and 100 plus double-sleeved cards. There's no frills on these, no dice trays. They enclose your cards in a solid, firm, and safe capsule, and they do so using the most compact design possible. What can I say? I'm in love with these. I get all the protection of a monolith or satin tower, but so much less space is taken up. And when the boulder is only $6.99 and $8.99 each, wow, you easily can outfit your giant deck collection. The finalized form of the Ultimate Guard Arc archive is superior as well. Finalized with improvements such as better magnets and multiple colors, the archive has gone up in the world since the early prototype I reviewed and transformed itself into one of the best storage options for everything from multiple deck boxes to those looking for a cool case for their small cube. 
Now, I do want to stress the archive still only takes the basic deck box form, by which I mean it'll hold boulders, top-loading plastic deck boxes like the Legion Iconic, things of that size and shape. So no, you're not fitting a monolith or satin tower in here. Or you don't need deck boxes at all, as the archive can hold up to 430 sleeved cards. So this is actually a great option for people with a small cube. The exterior is Xenoskin, the interior premium microfiber. It's a combination that works in other Ultimate Guard products and certainly works here, offering great protection and great quality. The boulder is not going to pop open. It's not going to come undone if you drop it off of the table. It's not going to break and shatter into a million pieces. This is my new favorite deck box, although I really like that Legion too. But what I really like about the boulders is how compact it is. You cannot ever create a deck box that takes up less space than a boulder and still houses double-sleeved commander decks, double-sleeved modern decks, single-sleeved standard decks. I love that unlike monoliths and satin towers, we have the option for 75, 80 card decks here in the smaller size. I love the price point. This is $6.99, the larger size for commander decks. Whoops, that's not the commander deck size. The larger size for commander decks is only $8.99. And with the archive, you can store five, six of them inside of here. You can have your cube, your modern library, your popper collection, your commander collection, 20, 24, decks in such a small amount of space, nice and neatly organized. That's something many Magic the Gathering players are looking for. Maybe it's not you. Maybe you've got one deck and you've got tokens and you've got dice. That's great. Get a Satin Tower from Ultra Pro. Get a Monolith from Ultimate Guard. Those are some of the best deck boxes as well. Hey, you've got a couple decks. I love that new Legion that I just showed you. But if you're like me, where you've got half a dozen commander decks, every popper deck that there is, every other modern deck that there is, and you are just taking up an enormous amount of space on your shelf with all of those satin towers, with all of those Legion hordes and vaults, this reduces it dramatically. And that's why I've actually gone out and gotten so many of these boulders for my own personal collection. People ask me, well, you give a lot of A's. What do you personally use? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have half a dozen Legion vaults up on my shelf. I have instead a couple dozen of these boulders. Looks like it's a 2A day because the finalized versions of the Ultimate Guard Boulder as well as the Ultimate Guard Archive are yet more excellence incarnate from what quite frankly is one of the best manufacturers on the market today, Ultimate Guard. Fabulous quality and as I said, one of my new personal favorites. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a message. Are you interested in the products reviewed in this video? Many of them are available via our affiliate link at the Tolarian Community College landing page at Card Kingdom. We don't have everything, but most of the A products are carried there. And so if your local game store doesn't have boulders or archives, then you can check them out at www.cardkingdom.com forward slash TCC. Just browsing the wares helps the channel in many ways. So thank you. And with so many options, some are better than others. Sometimes by a lot. Let's take a look. And with so many options, some are better than others. Sometimes by a lot. Let's take a look. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.